Five. Make them go. Hello. 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 Okay, I just have to know. Was this a straight offer or did you have to audition for this? That's a great question. I think that they, they approached me and asked if I, if I wanted to do it. We love an offer. <laughs> you feel right for it in that case, right? Yeah, it's yeah, nice exactly. when you think they already know. Exactly. And were you familiar with Hot Girl? Did you do any like research on her? Or was it more about the writing or a little bit of both? Well, I had heard of Hot Girl, but I didn't know anything about her specific story. So when I started doing my research, and I realized that she was actually created in 1941. I was shocked. The fact that DC was creating these badass female characters 80 years ago when we're struggling to see that represented now was, was really mind-blowing for me. And with that said, I immediately felt an immense sense of pride and an immediate sense of dread at the same time because you know there are people who've been living with this character in their world for years before I was ever a name in anyone's mouth. And that gives you a great sense of responsibility, but. It can be a little bit nerve-wracking <laughs> as well. So what's your approach to the character, like, you know, just taking on this role and, you know, now that you know some of that and then when you saw your lines, I mean, was it all directing? Did you, like, add your own feel, you know, flavor to it? You kind of take from what has happened in the past and you find the commonalities there and you keep those. And then, as a creative, selfishly, you want to put your own spin on something so you can have ownership and really dedicate yourself to the performance. Um, but again, in a world like DC, where the fans have opinions and they have all the information at their disposal and they have already have expectations, um, it can make it also a little bit scary. But in general, I think I've done her justice. <laughs> yeah, you see yourself cosplaying as Shire going forward now, coming next Comic Con now that you're officially in the role. I'm gonna need the year to make my abs look like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> she flatters me. Let me see. <laughs> you, have you uh, seen any uh, other animated versions of this uh, character? I have. I tried not to watch any actual performances, but I did sort of look at a lot of the history because if you watch an actual performance, you run into the, the you know the possibility of emulating or kind of mimicking something else. Um, and then as an actor, you're not as invested. So for me, it was like trying to figure out her core traits and then figuring out how to bring it into 2022 and tell the messages in a way that this audience will appreciate them. You know? I always coded Hot Girl as a woman of color. And so like, did you feel that also as kind of like, okay, I'm coming in here, I'm a woman of color, I'm gonna portray this badass, like, what it like? What was your process of getting prepared to do that? I was really excited when I learned that she has origins in ancient Egypt and a lot of her um, backstory. And I'm Lebanese, so kind of being from that region, I feel like it just it brings a little bit of an exotic nature, a little mysticism to it. Um, and I think that that shows up in Hawk Girl and the way that she speaks. She's she's a bit regal. Everything is very deliberate, and it's a bit otherworldly, you know. And and for me, it was about trying to, to kind of explore that. So I'm curious, I don't know if you can talk about this too much, there have been some interpretations of your character, and forgive me, but where she was essentially second fiddle to Hawkman or someone else. How would you describe your interactions? Because obviously this is a much different take of a stronger, more independent solo Hawk girl. Mm -hmm. How does she interact with the other characters, you would say? I think if you treated her like arm candy, she'd treat your arm like candy. I think that she'd just chew you up and spit you out. Um, it was really important to me to base it in reality, you know, to think about the women who are in the armed forces who are actively doing what Hawk Girl is doing in the film, right? Someone who's there to, to protect their people, their country, someone who's sacrificing their life. So for me, when you have these larger than life characters, it's really important to ground them in that type of humanity. So that was something that I considered a lot while doing her, um, was that I didn't want her to be a set piece, you know? She comes in and she is the one herding these cats and making sure everyone knows what the mission is and keeping them moving forward while they have their banter. She's like, okay, enough, we gotta go. You know, and I appreciate that she's a woman of action. I think that that is, is really powerful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know you did a, I think like a, a whole season, a couple of seasons of SVU. Mm -hmm. Were you able to take anything from that show to put it into Hawk Girl? That's a good question. I think that my character Kat and SVU and Hawk Girl probably have similar motivations. You know, they're out there risking their lives and dedicating their time to, to making sure everybody else is okay. You know, and often those characters don't leave a lot of room for themselves. So 
with Hawk Girl, I think in the future it'd be lovely to see her softer side, you know, and kind of get into that. Um, but between Hawk Girl and Cat, you know, I think that they're both badass females who aren't easily intimidated and they're mission driven and so it's really hard to deter somebody when that's their goal, you know? How do you handle heights? Like, like if you had to actually fly, could you handle that? Like <laughs> jumping off a building with wings and... I feel like... <laughs> The idea of standing on a tall building and looking down sounds terrifying, but the idea of flying sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that it would be, I would love to actually have wings and to fly, you know? I have a little fear of heights, but I think that it's different on that scale. I've, I've been in small jets, things like that, and I feel like, I'm like, this must be what she feels like, you know? <laughs> um, so I think I could handle it. So you said that um, Hawk Girl is basically mission focused in hurting the cat. So is she going to be the leader of the Justice League? I think she thinks she's the leader of the Justice League because she's the leader of her own domain. Um, I, I think that, but I don't think she's motivated by leadership because I don't think she wants the burden of that. She's like, let me go do the work. I'm not trying to talk to you guys about this, you know. And that's what makes this iteration nuanced in this film and, and prevent, keeps her from being one note is that she is forced to work with other people who are different from her, who are her enemies in some cases. And I think that's a great lesson overall, is that you have to find common ground with people in order to solve problems. And you kind of have to take that ball down. So to see her go from her entrance of just smashing things for three minutes to having to slow down, listen, and have a human moment with people, that, that brings some nuance to otherwise a character that could just kind of be one note. Do you find that there's many similarities between yourself and this character, or is it something that you sort of are able to imagine within yourself? I like being physical. Like, I love when I work out, I do a lot of fight workout. You know, I, I like being aggressive, I like being physical. I'm also stubborn as hell. I'm like, I need your help. I can do this. I'll figure it out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we're alike in that way. I would say our biggest difference is that she is very measured and she uses few words, gets her point across, and I'm definitely more of a rambler, you know? <laughs>